Good day, mate, and welcome to a brand new episode of Dinks with Kinks. Oh, uh, before we begin tonight's episode, I just want to say welcome back. We have been on break. We've been on. We have been on like a little hiatus, doing doing shenanigans and dealing with stuffs. Life. And we are back. <laughs> um, I am one of your hosts, uh, John Dondero, and with me as always, my two favorite people in the whole wide world, the sexiest of ones. Miss Rebecca and Mr. Shep. How y'all doing tonight? Hello, everyone. I yeah. missed you. We've had a break and he's still belting out all the lies. Man. Oh. At least they're sweet, I know. lies. Sweet, Tell me sweet lies. lies. Tell me Anyway. <laughs> so tonight Tell might be the most offensive Tell episode uh, of Dangerous with Kings we ever do. Oh, and the sad part is, it's not even because we're going to be talking something controversial. We're just going to be making very bad accents all night long because tonight, uh, after a, before a break, we talked about we were going back, you know, strong in their season finale with accents. So, mm-hmm. uh, hello, Governor, welcome, and we're going to talk about why we like accents and why I'm really bad at them. I can't do accents. I barely can what? talk English. <laughs> English and English. Ink. Well. That was like racist, but I'm all let it slide. Um, see, well, see, English is my second language, so it's kind of like it's it's you know hard enough to speak. So I'll stick with that. I the only accent I could do is the Southern accent, and that's only because I grew up with one, and I had to work really hard to like breed it out of me. Like I lots of diction classes. <laughs> I well, think much, my Southern accent did it take. Tell a us lot something. of breeding. breeding, a lot of breeding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm breedable. I'm breedable and submissive. <laughs> my southern breedable accent submissive comes out. Get the accent out of her. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my southern accent comes out every blue moon. Like I think if I, if I'm drinking, or if like I'm not paying attention, like if I'm really sleepy and I'm tired, I'll start talking like this, y'all. Blue moon. Like hey y'all, I'm tired. Mine, you accenting alone? mine comes out, my southern accent comes out when I'm angry, like I'm really angry or really emotional. Like, they don't come out, it's just be like, all the things. <laughs> when I'm angry, I sound more no- northern because I grew up in a northern family mm-hmm. in the south. And, you know, my my mom, who's southern as southern gets, was never angry, but my dad, on the other hand... Mm-hmm. Only time I ever heard him talk was angry in a northern accent. So I guess, you know, in my brain, he goes, you got to be northern if you're going to be angry about it. <laughs> These guys don't even know what you're doing right now. You're pissing me off. I never required an accent. So let With me that ask you voice, you don't what? need an accent. You just need to talk to me. Whisper yeah. sweet things to me, Shep. I don't <laughs> I don't think any of us on this uh, podcast have a pers- you know, accent, like so very never, distinct accent. One. Um, yeah, not really, not really a distinct. I think a lot of us have that very what do they call it, Midwestern, just flat accent, like just very flat. I think I think it's American because accent, American, yeah, like it's it's very flat. I think because a lot of all of us have been in media of some sort, and so we've mm-hmm. had to teach ourselves how to have that very neutral accent. Yeah. Have you seen you when you get happy? Or heard you, I mean? I mean. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. which, okay, These so. Are super southern. You, let's, not, let's not fake things. Out. Did, did you guys know uh, that accents were even a kink? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did. Since, yes, I did. Ever since 976 wet became a thing. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let me ask you this question. What is your favorite accent? Let's just go right now. Favorite? Like, what accent really, like, you just like, oh, I love to hear it. Oh, um. Boy, Honestly? it got real silent on this, so I'm just going to no, vamp while y'all think. No, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so sorry, 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 sorry. You, you gave her a tough one. But, yeah, because there are, like, I I'm literally going down a list. I gave you both a tough one because you didn't answer either. Um... Because I don't have things, favorite. I was I, trying to think about which ones entertain me. <laughs> I honestly English, English accents, English accents. I I I like the Australian accent. I do. There's something about the Australian. You like a little good day, mate. To, to, to put the shrimp on the bobby. 
or or a then new, go at your way, boo. Yes, or a New Zealand accent that side, and then I do I like a London accent now because in the UK the different regions have different types of accents. And they're all very yeah. regional, but I really, there's something about the posh, like English accent that is, I don't know. It's just that that's like, all right. <laughs> okay. So I used to love uh, English accents until I really started getting you know more into like the naughty language because of certain colloquialisms that I hate. I cannot stand the way the English people say cock. And that's how they refer to dick. Like, you know, you know me, I was already not a fan of the word cock, but just the way they say cock, I'm just like, that doesn't sound sexy to me. (laughs) I just, nothing about that sounds sexy. I personally, uh, love East European accents like German, Russian, the Russian accent, Russian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any type of Slavic accent just really does it for me. I absolutely love it. I mean, truth be told, the real reason why I didn't want to call one out was because like he like he demonstrated with the one you said i don't want to say my favorite and then john immediately butcher it by attempting to comically do it oh he wouldn't do that john, well, I know, there's only like so many it. accents i can do you mean like he did with the australian accent that you mentioned <laughs> i started the episode with australia he did that's why um but I really, yeah. <laughs> I love a lot of accents. So that's why I went silent. I was like, my brain froze and go, because they all, they all make me feel something different. You know, it's like asking yeah. if I like leather and lace. I like them both. You know, it's like they all make you feel something different. And, and in a different yeah. place, in a different time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also enjoy a Brooklyn accent. Like a woman with a Brooklyn accent is just, okay, you ever seen The Sixth Sense? Yes. The mom? Oh. God, I could listen to her talk all day long. <laughs> just, oh, man. Um, that really does it for me. So, yeah, it's not just, like, foreign accents. We, we're going to talk, like, Ameri- you know, like, your own country accents as yeah. well. Like, the southern dialect, northern. Uh, oh, yeah, there, you betcha. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Oh, oh yeah, oh, nor- yeah. More northern than <laughs> northern, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'd say that'd be Midwestern. But I always, like. Closer the- to Kennedy. <laughs> but there's also like you say southern there's like the southern bell accent that's that's very soft and southern and it's very slow and delicate and then you have the southern this the very soft southern accent and then but then you have like the country accent it's like you 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 gotta slip into that country southern where everything's sort of drawn out as well but it's all more in the front of your mouth where you just gotta make sure like it's you can't just say and you call everybody Shug. <laughs> hey Shug. Hey Shug. And and if you're doing the Southern Bell accent, it's it's oh honey, no darling. And you can't say that you have to like skip the R's. <laughs> John, what's your favorite accent? Like is the Eastern European? Like what? Yeah, like what? Eastern European or Brooklyn? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> So, and I'm, I'm going to tell a story uh, without doxing this person uh, who has become a fan of our podcast. And um, they messaged in about the smoking kink. And, you know, it was a female who had it. And we had, I had never spoken to a female with the kink. Yeah. And the way she described it was just like a whole new onset. Like, I, I, I it was like she was describing a different kink. Mm-hmm. And everything lined up, but it was smoking. And I loved it, but she was from Denmark, though I think her accent was a little more German. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I could just listen to you talk all day long. It was fantastic. <laughs> like, I just, I loved it. And I was just like, yeah. And she's talking about her, you know, like, not in a creepy way, not like I was just like heavy breathing and saying, I just <laughs> Were like, you really? Really? Or did you just No, I was heavy breathing. <laughs> German, German and Dutch do have a lot of the same nuances to them yeah Mm -hmm. icelandic accents are really they're they're, that's something oh yeah icelandic yeah that's like very distinctive and viking-ish yeah yeah Um, something something about that Mm. (laughs) i'll be your shield shield maiden Ah, let me ride that longboat (laughs) i can listen to uh def clock speak all day long like the members of def clock the two guitar players (laughs) Like yeah. every member of Death Clock, I just love their accents. The Wisconsin accent, 
uh, Murder Faces accent. Uh, I can never remember the two guitars, but they both have very distinct European accents. I can't play this grandpa's guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, but why do people like accents? Like, uh, let's let's get into like the why of it. Like, mm-hmm. why do you think people really dig and are attracted to accents? Let's let's get some guesses in because I got the actual answer. But I like oh, I, yeah? I think I think now that after the break, what I'm gonna start doing is we're gonna start making wild like, accusations and guesses uh, okay. during our right. episodes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, my guess is because um, accents are just. <laughs> They're very distinct and they're very personal and 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 it's very like it, no matter what the accent is, it's very exotic. It's different than you. You know that person grew up somewhere different than where you grew up. That person does, and that's exciting. That's like they they have different experience. They have a different worldview. That's that's exciting and and just how they pronounce things. It's just that's it's fun. I, I it's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's my guess. It is. <laughs> All right. That's a good guess, Shep. What about you? I think much like with any other kink, you know, some you have the visual triggered stimulation, some the touch sensitive kinks, and the accent would be one of the long lines of the auditory stimuli. Yeah. You know what? Those are two really good guesses, and we're going to mush them together to get the right answer because you guys both – Covered both of the actual reasons right <laughs> there. It it is um, and there there's a couple other reasons too. Like okay, so the one y'all didn't mention is um, I wouldn't say traumatic, but a defining moment of adolescence. Mm. Hearing an accent while you're going through puberty, association. Okay. When they turn uh, let's on say, the wall. Well, let's say there was, like, growing up, you had a crush on somebody on, like, TV or something like that, and they had the accent. You're going to associate that accent with that attraction. Brazil. Yeah. Mm, daddy mm. like it. There, there was a guy. He was a foreign exchange student. He was Brazilian. He was from uh-huh. Brazil. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, like you said that, and I was like, Brazil. And he, like, we would talk Brazil. on the phone. Yeah, so the, the Brazilian accent, yeah. I'm like, mm, a defining moment? That would be one. <laughs> so that's when you started getting the Brazilians done every time. Oh, okay. well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, it, exactly that. Like, when you're growing up, uh, the way kink works, and I've said this in many episodes, but the way, uh, you know, attraction works is your mind is constantly, like, imagine one of those, like, uh, squish ball, you sling at the seat, um, like, wall, and it sticks, that's mm-hmm. what it is. Your your mind is constantly just a sticky bounce thing that you're throwing at stuff. You're throwing and every sh- once in a while, you're throwing shit at a wall and see what sticks. <laughs> throwing, you're throwing at a wall and see what sticks. But no, your your brain will latch onto something. It will associate mm-hmm. something. I think we talked about this in the smell episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, it denotes uh, smells are the greatest tr- trigger for memory. Muy grande. And uh, association, you know, sound is a great sound, you know, for association, like. Oh, the sound of, like, the wind blowing through the trees. I love that. super relaxing. Mm-hmm. Well, somewhere in my childhood, I had a real big crush on an East German woman. Um, and it stuck. It just kind of grew in my mind, and I associate that. That, that face you just had. Like, you were just like, like, like you were flashing back I just then. You were just like, like you got what? some pal- heart what? palpitations. That was, that was my first love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least one I can remember. Makes her uh, that's my first boner. Uh, next, it is. It is exotic. It's new. It's different. It uh, represents something outside of what you would normally know. I mean, it's like the fear of the unknown. And we've always talked about scarousal is, you know, just you have this mm-hmm. love for experiencing new things and so you associate new cultures with new experiences, so new accents or new experiences. So I'm sexually attracted to this person because they do they fuck differently. Yeah. That's what well, that's in your brain, that's what you're thinking. Oh, well, that's true. But yeah. I think I think also I'm not saying they do. I think everybody fucked the same, but <laughs> but in your head, when you hear that accent, right. honestly that's where it goes. Is you go, Man, I bet you they fuck different. And I want to hear that while I fuck. 
Right. Like, I want to associate this new experience with this sound. So it's exotic <laughs> and new. And sometimes it's um, not just the accent, it's the full full bone of the combination of accent and unique wordplay, different from your own normal mannerisms and such. Mm-hmm. I think it's also their comfort level. I think um, because other countries, other countries don't have as puritanical a view of their sexuality and sex. And so I think it also, I know for me, I associate like the, there's a lot of countries that don't have that hang up, which is why you have the whole Parisian, you know, the Paris lover, because France that the, the, typically doesn't have that hang up with their sexuality. They're very open about it and the romantic. The, and I think that that's, that's also very appealing. It's very freeing. It's very like, oh, they're they're very free flowing and free loving, and in that, even though that may be a stereotype and that is an assumption, your brain sort of connects that, and you're like, it's they're that romantic French lover, you know? <laughs> oh, I I kind of I kind of see that. To like, say, I want to dip my little in your bichet mm. Like stereotypical association, and I don't necessarily mean a negative stereotype because, like I said, you know, okay. If I say, because uh, you can get two different variants from this, and I'll let you guys guess. If I say a very professional, clean, cold, calculating dominatrix, what accent does she have? Clean and calculated? Yeah, clean, calculated, strict. German. Yeah, German. German Russian. or yeah. English. British. Because it, those are that's what I said. Those are the two answers. Because you can get you can get the latex, uh, mm -hmm. like you know, you think dungeon German sex dungeon. We've you know everyone has yeah. ever heard that phrase. German dungeon porn. It's not porn. necessarily true. <laughs> yeah, German, we had German our, dungeon um, porn. Our English uh, dominatrix guest once. She had On our very uh, very second episode. Yeah. And. Like I said, so there are so you make associations with sexual acts to stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, growing up, uh, you guys ever heard seen the very uh, propaganda cartoon Rocky Bullwinkle? Yeah. During the Cold War, where they're just like, let's just fuck with Russia, let's just make them like bumbling idiots. Uh, yeah. Natasha, she was so mean, and but I just kind of wanted her to do bad things to me. Yeah. Watch her pull a ribbon out of my head. Hmm. Yes, that one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rocky. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So you associate your stereotypes of like, or even the you know, domination is Russian. Mm -hmm. Mean Russian woman. Uh, but also smooth, uh, charismatic fella. Just like a nice, mm -hmm. almost passionate man. Go ahead. Give me the stereotypical accent you're going to give him. Italian. Italian. Very, uh, maybe, Morticia maybe Spanish. And oh, Mertician, uh, Gomez. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Gomez was Spanish. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then Spanish oh, yeah. or so Italian. So it's like, yeah. And so a lot of, a lot of these associations, like I said, they're not necessarily negative stereotypes. I mean, no stereotype is good. We don't condone stereotyping anybody, but they are there for a reason. Like they do associate in our head. Everyone knows every stereotype and, like I said, those are the assumptions in our brain we make because we connect them, but we don't realize we connect them. Mm -hmm. Because the brain just goes, I don't care. I don't. I don't know what good bad is. I just, I store. You give me something, I put it in a box and I put it up here, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And it might be a little too close to the sexual attraction here, and because I'm not good at storing things in my brain, just like everybody. And that's how these attractions get made because, like, you have this like. Oh, I bet you. It's funny. Um, we were just talking about like sex dungeon porn. I know it. You know, all the German people I know are super vanilla. <laughs> like they're super vanilla. Yeah. And I'm just like, mm, you guys are just not living up to the stereotypes you should be. Oh. <laughs> just, um, you're letting me down. Wah, wah. <laughs> not all Canadians want to be covered in a, a maple syrup. Yeah. 
Yeah, only only two of them that I know. Only two Canadians I know get off on being covered in maple syrup. <laughs> Ask about the Saskatoon berry syrup. You might get more reaction from that one. Uh, Saskatoon berries? I don't even know what that is. Yeah. I do, baby. I do. You actually want to get somebody, and that's the thing, like the Southern Belle. Like you think about the Southern Belle, the primer. You want to get somebody who is not the opposite of vanilla? Get a Southern Belle. Because they, 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 trust me. <laughs> See, that's a stereotype right there. That's such a stereotype. It's a wrong stereotype. But when you think of, let's go there, the association to Southern Belle, almost because proper lady, mm-hmm. doing proper stuff, mm-hmm. very submissive, you know, Southern <laughs> Belle. Most of the time, Southern Belle ain't that submissive. Uh, um, they call them Iron Fist and Velvet Gloves for a reason. <laughs> Southern oh, Belle, would yeah. you come on and ring my bell? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, but yeah, so you do create these associations, these auditory associations with stereotypes you've picked up throughout the course of having this attraction. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, one of the reasons to do it. Now, of course, you know, let's talk about some safe things to do. Don't go to Germany for German Dutch, you know, dungeon porn. You're going to be, <laughs> you know, you can get that here. Yeah. Uh, but don't, let, let's, let's, y'all. I, don't, I can't believe I ever have to say this on the podcast. Don't be racist. Don't nope. be xenophobic. Nope. And don't be stereotypical. Don't assume because they have an accent that they are into blah de blah blah They just have an accent. They're from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, just so we yeah. always you know, have our audience understand, we explain xenophobic because, you know, some people might think, Xena, the warrior princess? I'm not afraid of her. So, yes. I always thought xenophobia was that you're afraid of the aliens from Alien. Uh-huh. They're xenomorphs. So if you're xenophobic. I love Rebecca sitting there going, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I, I don't I, know what Everybody alien loves Xena's accent, you know. Well, I know. How, how are you going to sit there and be bi and not and not know Alien with a freaking you know, Sigourney Weaver? Because I've seen There's Sigourney like, Weaver in better movies. Ooh. I don't. I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. <laughs> oh, I think no, no, so. no, no, no. Yes, yes. She's great in every movie. Yeah. But better movie than it? No. I- I'm going mm-hmm. to admit something on this podcast. I have not seen the first Alien all the way through. I have not seen any of the other Aliens or Predator, or any of the Predator movies. Wow. I know. So you just missed. You have already missed two Sigourney <laughs> Weaver movies, and you're just like, so much nah. For being primal. Three. Um, I take it back. Person. Three, because she was an alien. She was in the really shitty Alien movie too, with Ron Perlman. The one where they're like, "Let's bring Alien back and do it justice." And they said, "Nah, fam. We're just gonna make another crappy Alien film." But we got Sigourney Weaver. Okay, how about um, what is it? Um, character named Selena in the Vampire movies. That was a good accent too. Hmm. hmm. Anyway, uh, back to the safety thing. Oh, come on. You don't remember that one either? Those? That series, actually? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course, I'm making I don't watch name. vampire content. You don't watch vampire content? I, I don't watch anything with vampires. I have no interest in vampires. I just, no. What? Get out. <laughs> what? I love vampire movies. I love vampires. I don't, I don't like any creature that is literally their, um, their downfall is just time of day. <laughs> that's just, just, this is the worst, the, 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 the weakest creature in the world. You'll, you're like a gremlin. A gremlin? You don't multiply with water. <laughs> well, I know so. Sigourney Weaver in Ghostbusters. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, gosh, she's hot. Yeah. Like, we are we are we are down a Sigourney Weaver uh, <laughs> rabbit hole. And, let's get back. Let's get back on topic. Okay. okay. Especially, the, I, especially the moment when she turned into a dog. But but <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually bringing it back. I'm bringing it back because okay, this it is back. a Sigourney Weaver. Um, and it talks about actually. Um, my, I remember Sigourney Weaver was in this movie called Working Girl with uh, Melanie Griffith. And yeah. she has Melanie has this. Uh, her character has this very, um, like, like Queens, like New York, like the lower lower New York 
class accent and she goes to work in like the upper class of New York and how they have different accents and how she's training herself out of that. And it was, it was like, yeah, I always remember that it was a very distinct accent in my head of, yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and it finally came to me, the Underworld series. Female oh yeah. Vampire, Kate Blanchett. So. Yes. Yes. See, I can never remember her real name. So that's why I said the character. Ooh, Kate Blanchett. She's gorgeous. Has a great yeah, accent, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, She has a great accent. Mm. Who, are, who are some celebrities that you would wish would talk to you, that you could listen to talk all day long? Like, you literally will, like, just turn on the, whatever they're on just to listen to, just to hear their voice. Oh, God, I cannot remember his name, but you'll know who I'm talking about. Uh, he has, uh, okay, have you guys seen The Mandalorian? Season one? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, the man who hires Mando to go track down the child. Yeah. I'm, I'm, his name is at the top tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'll look it up. But Shep, answer a question. Let, stall for me. Vamp for me. Okay. So Shep, what about you? Like, what is who's somebody who's like like let, let's talk with celebrities. Not like not just like a person you know, but like a celebrity who is somebody that their accent really makes it for you. Well, I mean, Kate Beckinsale's natural accent is yeah. is really cool. Uh, yes, and, and she and in I fact just, has a English accent. She does. Yes, yes. I mean, I just I get um not into the I'm trying to uh, remember which dialects are which, but mm-hmm. there's ones that are like really really heavy and such like that, and those don't really get me. It's the more it's the lighter ones like Kate Beckinsale's and such. Yeah. Yes. That dialect it, uh, always pulls me in for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Back when I was doing um, um, radio DJing and stuff, for some reason I naturally fell into because uh, we had it was inside of a virtual game and we had a castle and all that kind of stuff. So I, for some reason, fell into natural English accents when I was DJing. Uh, that people kept people kept getting really pulled into into those. <laughs> Werner Horzog. Oh yeah. I could listen to that man talk all day long. <laughs> Just yeah. You have no idea, and everyone knows his voice. And if you heard it, it's very distinct. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's been in a ton of things. Like he's oh, a great he's or, a great voice or, actor, and does a lot. Of... <laughs> oh, Morgan Freeman, right there. There you go. See? Uh, there you go. Okay. Kevin McKidd. He has this very um he it, it's this very deep Scottish accent. It's it like and he's he's on like Grey's Anatomy, but he's been in a whole bunch of other stuff too. But he 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 has he's like learned to have the American accent, but when he's in his natural accent, that's deep, really like articulated, like Scottish accent. Oh, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I was like something about that. Yeah, that that. Juan Carlos Braveheart. Yeah, is another man I could listen to. Hmm. Why? He just he has a very distinct voice. Like I love his voice. Uh, he he played. Uh, he was in, he was also in the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. He is uh, Moff Gideon. Uh, he's in Breaking Bad. He's in uh, the Boys. Uh, he makes yeah. like the most excellent bad guy. Like he's just like <laughs> I'm here, but he's just very distinct. He's very like pronounced. Yeah, I hate that they're all like males. That I'm like I could just listen to you talk all day long. I'm trying to think of a female I could listen yeah, to. Yeah, like all day long. I'm sure you probably get into Antonio Banderas. No, uh, can't understand no. what he's saying. Oh no, you know this is this is this is one from Matt Left Field, Patrick Stewart. I could listen oh God, yeah. to Patrick mm-hmm. Stewart all, all day long. Like Patrick <laughs> oh, Stewart, she, like, all day her. long. Patrick Stewart, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even uh, Picard. Yeah, just, just, just Pic- yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Anything he's in. Yes, yeah. Sean Connery. Oh, Sean Connery okay. used to be, yeah. But there's something about it. I think it got overplayed for me. It's one of those accents. I'm like, mm, all right. So, but... Early, acc- early years, Connery. Yeah. yeah. Um, accents are just a, a lot of fun. But 
here's the thing. Accents are fun, but if there's not a lot of substance behind, like I, I think that that's another thing that I get caution people one and done. caution people about because they get caught up in the accent sometimes like they get sort of uh hypnotized by it i've and i've actually seen my friends like my friends it happen to them like they're talking like the person that has the accent is talking to them and they're just all caught up in this conversation but i'm like are you into that person or are you just trying to get them to keep talking to you like you like yeah yeah like so just uh, that's the one thing i do caution is yes it's fun and it's exciting and it's very um intriguing and very and can be very attractive it is a bonus but just make sure that you don't get caught up in the fact that their accent is not your fantasy like you, you have no. this fantasy of the of what that type of accent in your head like again like stereotypes but don't don't try to associate that fantasy to that person with that accent like <laughs> just just be careful with that Yes, it starts off with, good evening, my darling. And it evolves into, hey girl, back that up. Mm. <laughs> right. And, you know, I think for me, I, I, I'm, I'm looking through other people I enjoy. I'm gay for accents. Oh, well, I can see that, though. But you're pants, so yeah, does that really matter? Butt is butt? It, yeah, yeah, butt is butt, but I am totally <laughs> Peter is gay pan. for accents. Yes. Fair. And yeah. I have... No problem with that. I'm just like, all right. I'm here for it. You're, you, but see, your choices are primo. I am absolutely Chef's here kiss. for it. But like the, the mom uh, from Six Sense, I cannot remember the actress's right. name, but she's been in other films. Mm-hmm. Uh, but her accent in that was really hot. Just that whole. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, that's really good. Um, <laughs> let me think. I think I think that's it. It's but like actually, really like I said, it's a good soft back. Mm. It's a good. We're, we're back. We're back doing episodes, and yes. I think Access was a great place to start. Yes, it was. Uh, now, I'd love to spin a wheel, but guess what? What? We're not spinning a wheel. Why? Next week's episode is going to be a complete surprise. What? Okay. Because we're at the start of a brand new season. Oh. The wheel has not been combined. Oh. It has not been formulated. So next week is going to be a surprise episode, our official season premiere. What As season it is it? Three? Let's like this was just, yeah. Oh wow! Have we no, been wait, this is season four, I think. Have we been at it this long? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> we're in season three or season four. I can't remember. I thought it was three. Twenty twenty. I thought the next season was on the floor. Yeah. yeah so that. if we started in twenty twenty, this would be season four. Oh my gosh. We've been doing this. We've yeah. been talking King for a long time. <laughs> we have. Absolutely, <laughs> we have. That's problem. Man. I don't know. (laughs) Well, I'm very excited about our surprise then. It is going to be good. And it's going to be a brand new kink. It's going to be, and we were going to introduce our new kink wheel and kind of read off everything that's on there. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I didn't want, I didn't want to, you know, y'all to come on here and be like, well, we're going to listen to next week and be like, too bad. We're not. Mm -hmm. I'm revealing it for the season premiere. And we always do that. We're leaving you guys. We always do a, yeah, we always do a surprise episode for the season premiere. We're back. (laughs) <laughs> Until we get canceled again. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> again, follow us on that social media at Dinks with Kinks on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, I am your host, John and Darren. With me, as always, my two favorite people, Miss Rebecca and Mr. Shep. Good evening, everyone. Until next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Have a good time.